Right, let's go to Kenya now, where opposition leader Raila Odinga was expected to announce his next move after his loss in the presidential election that he claims were rigged today, but that briefing has since been moved to tomorrow. Now, the decision has a potential to either ease or exacerbate a very volatile political crisis in the East African powerhouse. But for the latest in Kenya, we're very pleased to be joined on the line by SABC East African correspondent Sarah Kimani. Sarah, a very good afternoon to you. Why has Odinga moved uh, today's briefing? Well, uh, Odinga says that uh, he has postponed the announcement because uh, the coalition is having what he's calling urgent, complex, and uh, detailed meetings that will determine uh, the announcement that they make tomorrow. A lot of people are thinking that probably uh, NASA is now considering going to court and probably the reason why they're engaged in meetings running throughout the day. Uh, they just have up to Friday to file a, a petition in court and so time is clearly running out for them. If by Friday uh, they have not filed a petition, then it means that uh, President Kenyatta can be thrown in on the 29th of uh, August. Right. And Sarah, how is the situation on the ground today? I mean, are things getting any better? Is there a way forward? Yes, the country is back to normal. Uh, people have resumed uh, their work today. Uh, even in the areas where there was sporadic protests, uh, Kenyans uh, today just went back to work. A clear indication that they had ignored uh, former Prime Minister Raila Odinga's uh, calls for them to boycott work and wait for an announcement today that he would be making. Mm, any reports of uh, sporadic uh, incidents of violence in any parts of, uh, of course, uh, some of the areas that were touted to be uh, involved in the violence post election violence, Sarah? We have been uh, to Kibera, one of the areas that uh, was the uh, flashpoint of those uh, clashes between yeah. uh, protesters and police, and it has been very quiet. Um, the only thing that maybe we can report is that the Kenyan government has uh, issued a warning that it's going to be shutting down to uh, civil society organizations mm -hmm. that have been deeply involved in petitioning, uh, taking cases to court against the Electoral Commission, and it says that uh, those two organizations, one of them called uh, AFRICOG, and the other the one, the Kenya Human Rights Commission, it says both organizations uh, are not registered. They have been operating without proper registration and also that they have uh, embezzled money and not paid taxes. Um, a lot of people, and as I said, there's both civil society organizations saying that they are being witch-hunted for their involvement with the opposition and their hardline stance against the government. Sarah, talk to us about uh, you know this meeting that is started to take place, of course, by the opposition when can we expect the results of that? And uh, are we likely to get the, uh, the, the opposition conceding uh, defeat in the past uh, polls? Well, what you know for sure is that uh, Odinga is not likely to concede because he says uh, there was massive fraud uh, and that the uh, election, electronic systems were hard to plant the results in favor of President Kenyatta. Uh, they said the announcement will be out tomorrow, this uh, long-awaited announcement that they are holding will be out tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, probably uh, something to do with uh, going to court or uh, demanding a public inquiry uh, over uh, what could have gone wrong during the trialing of the election uh, results, or they could also be calling for protests, countrywide protests or mass action uh, beginning uh, probably the day after or beginning next week. And then what does this all mean, Sarah, for the new administration or the incumbent administration of, of course, uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta? When can he, can he then start moving the country towards uh, the new reforms that he promised? during his campaigns. When he spoke yesterday, Kenyatta said that people had resumed work, and he himself, he said he had just finished a meeting with the uh, transition committee, uh, the, the people who will be dealing with the fair union on the 29th, meaning uh, he's uh, probably deciding to ignore uh, what has happened and uh, the decision by the opposition not to uh, accept the results. But he reminded them that they still have the legal option open, although um, it is not clear that the opposition will be taking that route. He has ever warned that he will not be allowing violent demonstrations and looting of property. Um, tomorrow, beginning next week, we expect that uh, 
people who, who are voted in for the other seats, the county government seats and the National Assembly, uh, will be sworn in. So clearly, apart from the opposition that is still holding its ground, the rest of the country is trying to move forward. But Sarah, just a very quick one before I let you go. Just off the side, with all this that is going on, people contesting results and so forth, has there been any headway into the investigation of the killing of uh, Mr. Masando? The, the police have been very quiet on the investigations that they are doing. What we know for sure is that Mr. Msando will be uh, buried in his home village in Western Kenya uh, this coming weekend. Uh, probably then the police will give us an update uh, during the funeral service which will be held here in Nairobi on Friday on any progress that has been made. They have remained a mum of uh, any investigations that they are carrying out. Thank you so much for that sound update. That is our SABC East Africa correspondent, Sarah Kimani, on the, li on the line to us all the way from Nairobi, Kenya.